It's a pleasure to introduce to some and many two powerful women of God. And the first powerful woman of God we're going to receive such a transformation in her life. Powerful, a warrior, a frontliner. And she lets it be known. She lets it be known. Our sister, Minister Rashawn. Hallelujah, Lord. You guys are here for a treat? Go ahead and continue praising them. Thank you, Lord. my bishop, Eric L. Jackson, Lady Bishop, Constant Jackson, who are my parents in Christ. I want to thank you all, Bishop and Lady Bishop, for allowing me to speak today. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Well, we're going to start with a prayer, and we're going to get started on this. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that you called me, Father God. Thanks to you, Father God, that I heed your call, Lord. I thank you, Father God. I love you, Lord Jesus. I'm asking you, Father God, as I stand up here before your ministry, Father God, is to give me the word, Father God. Give me a dynamic word, Lord. Give me your word. Put it on my heart, Father God. Speak through my lips, Lord. Through my mouth, Father God. And I'll forever give you the joy. I worship you today, Lord. I love you, Father God. And I thank you for doing for me what I cannot do for myself, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. I pray these things, Jesus, to you. Because I know it's already done. And I just want to thank you in advance, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Come today as a minister. Not to preach, but to teach and to give you a lesson. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Well, I want to talk about the promises God gave to Abraham and the promises that he got, has given to humans. Come on. First of all, I want to uh, give a little testimony from the promise seed. Wow. When I was eight years old, my mom used to always have me to come and see this, call me to watch this movie with her, and it was called The Bad Seed. <laughs> yeah, it's about a little girl named Rhoda who didn't have her way, and she couldn't have her way, she did whatever things she, bad she can do. Like, beat up the old man, take his shoes, you know. I don't know what my mama would have me watch that movie, because the little girl, she was, she was evil, you know. And she did everything that she can do when she get mad, you know, she didn't have her way, and that's what she would do. She would get mad, and kill was on her mind. As I would watch this movie, and my mom would always call me when she would take a break, she like, bae, can you come in here and kill this? You know, it was a bug, a roach, you know, but the idea was she called me to kill it all the time. I had five, five more sisters and four more brothers. <laughs> but she had called me to kill it, so I kill it, you know. So I liked that movie. I looked at that movie. I watched the movie all the time with her. And it was another movie, Imitation of Life, you know. I don't know why my mother would have me to watch these movies, because they was like, you know, they did things to their parents, you know. But anyway, uh, I praise God is because uh, today, you know, I'm not that bad seed, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, I just want to let you know, if you don't protect that seed as it coming forth, if you don't nature it, it will prevail to over nutrients, okay? So I just wanted to say that little testimony about the bad seed. I know today that the Spirit of the Lord is here because I have that seed today, the right yeah. seed. <laughs> um, the promises there was 8,810 promises and 7,487 promises which are promised to humans. And uh, they were all in the Bible. They're all in the Bible. This promise that God promised to uh, Abraham He's, Genesis 12, 2 and 3 speaks on, I will, my, I will make you a great nation, and you shall be a blessing. 
I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse them who curses you. And in you and all your families of the earth shall be blessed. Wow. All his family is blessed. God gave Abraham the eternal life. Not only did he give him eternal life because of his faith, he gave him the promised life. You know? I can't say this word. Canaan, C-A-N-A-A-N. That is the promised life that he gave, the promised land that he gave to him. Um, I just want to say that I dreams about this promised land. You know, it's somewhere that we trying to get to for our right. eternal life. Right. You know, and uh, you just don't get by there because of the promise. It's not like God gave you a ring like your husband or your girlfriend did give you a ring. You would have to swallow more than one diamond to get that hey. shine and that light out of you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I just want to say that uh, I'm glad that today that I have a relationship with him because in order for Abraham to get that relationship with God, it had to be a covenant relationship. He had to obey him. And he truly obeyed him. You couldn't tell Abraham nothing. He truly obeyed him. He listened. He honored God. And that's what he did. And God blessed him. Now he said, we're blessed too. So Isaiah 41.10, that's one of our blessings is, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am with your God. I am your God. I will strengthen you. You, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Now imagine that. God's righteous hand is very powerful it's because he has me standing here today. Amen. You know, I love God, and I want every promise that he promised to me, and I want him to prom and I want to share the promises with his land. Come on. Amen. You know? I truly love God, and um, I'm expecting. Okay. So my question is to you, do you believe that God gave you that same promise? Amen. Amen. Well, I do. Come on. It's because according to Psalms. According to Psalms 23, the Lord is the Lord, the shepherd of his people. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We shall not want. Amen. He make us to lie down, but he say me, to lie down in green pastures. Now, if that ain't the promised land, yes. Amen. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. And he did everything for me. Amen. I couldn't have do it, done it if it wasn't for the Lord, Jesus Christ, his son. Amen. I wouldn't be standing here before you today. Amen. 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 I want to ask a quarter question. I want to elaborate on, um, excuse me, I want to elaborate on some of the, um, on these three discussions, questions that I have. It's one of them is how do you keep the promise while waiting? Well, according to Philippians 4.19, God don't take his hands off of us. You know that. So Amen. this is the promise. It's to love one another. Okay, now. Encourage one another. Yes. Replenish yourself. You know, when you're thinking like it, it's, it's all over, it's done, and God is not going to come, he's not going to do that. You know, God worked in wrong too. You know? But just when you think that it's not done, that's when he's working for you. On, you know, have patience. That's one thing we have to have patience. I have to have patience. Go by what you know and not what you feel. Because sometimes we can get caught up in our feelings real bad. Caught up in our feelings. Do not give Satan no place in your mind. If you have to go to sleep thinking about Jesus, then that's what you should do. Because it feels good doing it. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. It does. It's, walk in your anointing. You know, um, when Harriet Tubman was free and went to free the slaves, she prayed to God to, to watch her while she go through the river because the man told her that in order that she, she have to follow, either follow the North Star or that river and you would get the freedom. But there was no North Star, so she took the river. And when she followed the river, 
She made it. When she got to when she got to some uh, freedom, they asked her. One of the guys said, "Well, how did you make it like that?" She said, "By my faith, I prayed for my faith." And you know, everything was in that water. Some of everything, alligators, whatever, it was in the water. But she made it through. So the man told her, he said. She got there, she walked, she filled the paper out, she got the paper, and she's walking like, he looked at it, he say, walk like you got a right. Man. Say, walk, and that's what we have to do. Walk like we have a right, and we do have a right. We have a purpose to fulfill. So today, we walk in our right today. Don't be afraid. Praise your Lord. Don't care about what nobody say to you. Do what you have to do for the God. Because he's the only one that's going to reward you. He's holding your promise. He wants you to fulfill it so he can give it to you. Yeah. You know? So, this is how we're going to learn to share and speak into our promise. Ask God to deliver you from you. From your thinking that you have that, that hindering you because you're thinking so much. You know? We think a lot. Yeah, we think a lot. Yeah. Keep bold faith. Endure. Endure and expect. Because we I expect something out of this. I expect for you, me, God's children that's out there to get a, a healing, a, something, a deliverance. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Obey God's word in his manner. Know that God knows you know better. Yeah. Praise, pray to God. Let your mind stay on Jesus. It's a wonderful thing. I'm not perfect. No, I'm not. But my God is. That's why I keep him on my mind. Because he's perfect. He's perfect. And he keeps me in perfect peace. He keeps me in perfect peace. Yes, he does. Keep Jesus on the throne at all times. Not yourself. Not your image. Keep Jesus on the throne. Because he holds your times in his hand. Keep him on the throne. Most of all, you must always remember that you're in a prophetic ministry. Stay rooted, immersed in hope, and motivated by faith. Amen. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Amen. That saying says, stand with Jesus, because when we don't, we will fall short with Satan. Ooh. Now what I want to know is your seed talking back to you. I tell you how my seed talking back to me is because it gave me forgiveness. Come on. It gave me rest. Yes. yes, it did. It gave me healing. Yes, it gave Lee healing. Yes. yes, Lord. I see today he got healing. That's your promise. He gave me strength, family restoration, promotion, Woo. blessed children, yeah. abundance. Yeah. Today I can say that I am blessed. He's blessing me to be a giver. The head and not the tail. Hey. To be the, the lender and not the borrower. <laughs> so, he never takes his hands off of you. According to John 10, 27, 29, he never takes his hands off of you. He always keeps you. So, keep cultivating your seed. Develop, make growth, and grow in your seed. A sentence expressing a complete thought. That's why we are to use God in every spoken word. And I just want to say thank you for allowing me to speak, and I stay grounded. I want to call up a, bre a beautiful young lady that I know, that I learned from. The anointing is on her as well. Say that. Amen. Issa. Love you, Issa. Minister Issa. Is it minister? Yeah, it's minister. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get it wrong. That's okay. That's okay. Keep it going up in here, yeah. right? So we keep it going in here. We just say thank you, thank you, Mr. Rashawn. You know, talking about that seed, right? Ooh, powerful, powerful. Let me do a, a, a prayer, okay? All right. Thank you, Jesus. We just say thank you, O oh Lord. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord. I come to you as humbly as I know how, O oh God. 
Father God, I just say thank you for this time and thank you for this hour, Father God. Pour into me, Father God, and use me today according to your will, Father God. Touch my lips, Father God, that I'm able to speak your words to your people, Father God. And again, I give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Ooh, hallelujah, Lord. I just want to say again, I thank God uh, for so many things. Um, of course, you know, one of the main things I thank God for is for our bishop, Eric L. Jackson, and Lady Bishop, Constance Jackson, and this place, this place. This is the power of love, right? The house of praise. Yes. Um, I, thank, uh, I thank God for, like I said before, for uh, many things that in my life. I thank him for um, my family. I thank him for my friends. I thank him for each and every one of you. Um, you know, God is so powerful. It's just amazing because over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about various things, but it all comes together. You know, Bishop said uh, weeks ago, like how we're getting back to the basics, right? So we started back in Genesis, right from the beginning. And so getting back to the basics, is something that we need to do from time to time because like we'll keep going and doing things um but things get a little mixed up so we just need to like let's start back to the basics okay you know when we're starting back to the basics it really means a return um to a way of doing something or thinking about something i don't know why my mouth is super dry you have a can I use your water? Oh. oh, thank you. All of a sudden. Thank you. Thank you. So we're getting back to the basics, right? And then we had minister. Excuse me, guys. Thank you. We had minister Oshonda uh, talking about uh you know the character defects right and we had sister hardiman i um, mean wait i'll back up when minister oshana was talking about the character defects it's like you know being able to choose of what we want to do or what to say or how to act uh, Ms. minister hardiman she was talking about the the various bodies you know, being in the body, like outside, you know, in the carnal, being out there on the street, being in those type of bodies. But when she came back here to POL, and then she's in the body of Christ, right? Amen. Rob talked about uh, having the spiritual oil change, Amen. right? And sometimes we need to, you know, because if things aren't running smoothly, we need to change things out. That's right. And that's getting back to the basics, right? Amen. And then we heard from a powerful speaker uh, last week which is uh, Minister Erica, and she's our praise team uh, leader. And she was talking about also about having the foundations and how um, being disciplined and being a disciple, you know, discipline makes you a disciple to your own core beliefs and the attack on the core beliefs and what you think and what your mind is, and, you know? And so the whole thing is like, it's all looping around all together, right? You know, from the body parts, we were out there in the world. Now we're here with the body of Christ. You know, like we're cleaning things up. We're getting all the junk out, all the character defects, the gossip, the lying, the pride, right? Um, we're starting to, trying to just, we're just getting everything back to new, right? We got to clear some things out. So when we were talking about, when, when Erica left off, you know, uh, regarding, you know, our mindset and what we think, and so um, the, another part of the, the, the body is um, when we are thinking of stuff or different things, it could be positive, it could be negative. Um, it usually comes out of our mouth. It's our tongue. And that's the one thing that we have to be very uh, careful about. And that's what the word was today for me. As soon as I got the, the uh, word saying like, okay, you and Rashawn have the word, all I heard was the power of the tongue. Power of the tongue, right? So
So that's what we're going to be learning today, or you know, discussing today, is about the tongue. Um, did you know that the tongue is a strong muscle? It's a little. It's a strong muscle. Um, it's strong in in different areas. Um, did you know that your tongue um, is only three inches long? So the tongue is like equivalent to three quarters, or like a debit card. That's how long our tongue is. Um, but did you know that um, the longest tongue, one of the longest tongue is the anteater. It's 20 inches long. That's a, that's a lot of inches. So it's 20 inches long. And then you have the giraffe. You know, the giraffe's tongue is long as well. But where it says like in James, if you could turn to James 3.5, it talks about, this is where James is talking about, um, of course, the tongue. He says, likewise, the tongue is small, but part of the body, but it boasts, but it makes great boasts. Mm -hmm. Let me read that again. So in James 3, 5, it says, likewise, the tongue is small, part of the body, but it makes great boasts. You know, usually we're talking either, you know, the tongue, you know, when we are talking, it's either we're making great um, great boasts of things, or it's also for us to like, we tear down, you know? The tongue is very important for us. It helps us to swallow, it helps us to chew, right? So we do need the, the tongue. Did you know, I was reading this, I found out about the tiger. The tiger's tongue um, is, a, is a strong muscle. The tiger tongue can lick paint off of a wall. It's sharp enough to remove paint from walls and skin from prey. It strips fur, feathers, and meat off of the prey. That's how powerful the, the tiger's tongue. Also, that's how powerful the human tongue. Because like I said, like we can bring up or we can like really tear down, right? So in, if we go to Proverbs 18.21, it says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit, therefore wise to understand the power of the tongue. So the fact that the tongue can bring life and death, right? right and it's depending on um, the, how, what you eat, the fruit. And so like when we're talking about the power of the tongue, it's not just the tongue itself, it's coming from what's coming from your heart. Like what are you eating? You know, so if we're eating like, let's say if you're eating like bad fruit, it's going to taste bad, right? Or if you're always constantly eating junk food or salty foods or things that are not really good for us, for our human body, after time, after we're consuming a lot of like bad things to eat, our body is not conditioned enough. And that's when the human body will get sick or it'll create diseases, right? So we need to feel our body, just like with the fruit, you know, like what are you feeling in your body? What are you feeding into your heart? Okay, because whatever is in your heart, you know, when you think about something, you know, it sells on your heart and then it comes out your mouth. Okay, so it either comes out your mouth and then it comes out, you display it in like your behaviors. Um, I know that when I used to work in the prison and we used to do, um, I used to do counseling classes or, you know, these were group classes for some of the inmates, right? And then there was like this one thing that we would always read and um, it was like really, it was really profound. It was like, t it was Gandhi. This is like one of the things that we would read. It says, your beliefs become your thoughts and your thoughts become your words, and your words become your actions, and your actions become your habits, and your habits become your values, and your values become your destiny. Those things is like what it says, like your thoughts become your words, whatever you're thinking, whatever you are feeling yourself, just like with an athlete. You see an athlete, an athlete goes out there and they're exercising, and they're lifting weights because they're conditioning their body, right? So they can be the best athlete out there. We're, right now we're going through the Olympics, right? It's in, in Paris. These athletes have been preparing for, 
for months or even years, you know, to be at the top shape in order to, to compete and to win the gold, right? So what are we doing with our bodies? What are we putting in our bodies? Are you reading the word of God? Are you praying? Or what are you listening to? Okay, are you listening to certain type of songs that are not really fulfilling for you? Are you watching certain type of shows that are not really for you? You know, that's not, you know, putting things into you that's going to be able to, so you'll be able to show the light. You know, now that we are part of the body of Christ, that means the Holy Spirit lives within us, right? And when the Holy Spirit lives within us, it's like, it's almost like when we know better, we're supposed to do better, yeah. right? It's like a gradual change over time. You know, when we are, when we have the Holy Spirit in us, then we are the, we're supposed to let the Holy Spirit be able to, to guide us and to lead us in everything, even with our thoughts. Yeah. I know it's kind of hard sometimes, you know, because thoughts just, you know, jump in from anywhere. Just like what Bishop said, um, you know, like the thoughts, you know, they're all over, you know, and the, these are the birds, but we don't need to have the nest. We don't need to have the birds making a nest on our heads. On. So whenever we have those type of thoughts, you know, we're supposed to captivate them right away and cast them out. Because whatever, th whatever we're thinking, it goes into our heart. And then whatever is in our heart, that's how we're speaking. You know, it's like either we're speaking, we're supposed to be speaking with, with the spirit of love, right? We're supposed to have like the fruit of the spirit within us. Yes. We're supposed to be speaking to each other, not just here, but also at home and out there on the streets, on our jobs and our schools. Yes. We're supposed to be speaking with love. Amen. We're supposed to be having love Hallelujah. within our hearts, right? Amen. I want to be able to speak and to edify and to uplift and not tear down. Not to tear down. That is not one of the things that we want to do. Because we're like, we're, we're knowing better. We're doing better and we're knowing better. That's right. Hallelujah, Lord. There was another scripture that I wanted to, to say, and it was coming from James. It was still part of James. It was James 3 6. And it says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members and staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by hell. And it's funny because, I mean, it's not really funny, but you see, like, lately, there's been a lot of fires going on all throughout the state of California. Come on. You know, and the Cal we just had a, a huge one right here off uh, Avenue I. It was at a, one of those uh, junkyards. And it was like hundreds of cars. It's a lot of toxic coming out. And it's just everything was burning. It was like just huge black smoke. You know, and that's what fire does. Fire will go ahead and destroy things. Just like with us, with the, with the tongue. The tongue, you know, when we're speaking things, it just brings fire if it's not anything that is positive. Um, but how can we do this? How can we clean up our, our speech? And again, it's from praying, Amen. being in the word of God, word of God. you know, and also in Psalms 51, it says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Those are the one of the things that we could do in order to, um, to become clean and to, to, to have our speech to be a little bit more positive. Um, other than that, there wasn't really, I don't want to say there's not too much, but the main thing was with, regarding our thinking is like, what is our thoughts? What are we putting in our head? You know, what are the words that we're speaking to each other? Is it speaking, are we speaking to each other in love? Or are we condemning each other? Or what are you speaking to yourselves, most importantly? We can speak life and death over ourselves. You know, are we speaking like, okay, you know, if I'm not feeling well, am I walking around saying like, oh, I'm sick? No. You know, we're supposed to, spur you know, you're supposed to look up the scriptures and be able to find the scriptures for healing. You speak those things over your life. You get in the Bible and you look up the certain scriptures or whatever thing that you're going through and you speak it over you. You know, um, 
the more that you're in your Bible, the more that we're praying, the more that we are able to, to grab some scriptures and to speak over your life, then you can have a more abundant life because we are God's children and he loves us so very much. And we just say thank you for him, Father God. We thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we just say thank you. If there's anything that you want to be able to clean up in your life right now, if there is something that you want to ask God to remove from you, any type of those negative thoughts, the ministers are here for you, Amen. to pray for you. And you can come up and get prayer 